So here we are with the HP Pavilion All-in-One 27. This is the R119 model, which is the 27-inch model, 1080p with a 6-core um, Intel i5 processor, 8th generation. Uh, we're going to open it up. Okay, so I've laid this down on a flat surface and I've taken the plastic off. Uh, the surface, uh, most notably, is uh, soft. Make sure that uh, you don't have anything on there that'll scratch the glass. And there's really uh, two things you need to know. Uh, the first is, for this particular model, there are plugs here and here that you need to uh, pop out. And there are four little uh, uh, screws here that will come out with this uh, Allen key. So I'll just show you that. Just pop that in and they, these just spin out so they're very easy you just turn them to the left then this will pop off so just pop that out nice and easy and you can see what's in there pop this one out nice and easy there you go now very careful to keep all my parts laid out Okay, so I've now taken the four screws out with the Allen key, and bingo, that just pops off. Okay, so I'm going to use a Phillips head screwdriver and a little pressure. Just print, there you go. You can see that pop up. Let's go to the other side and do the same thing. And you'll hear it just sort of click. There we go. And you just pry your way around and lift it up. So that's lifting up quite nicely. Okay, so before going any further, I want to address something. If you look at the side of this, you'll notice this unit has a DVD. It also has the pinhole to remove the DVD. You're probably going to be tempted just to pop that out, but uh, I can assure you that on the inside there's a long ribbon cable, which will, um, which means that the back will come off quite nicely without having to um, worry about taking the DVD out. The DVD stays in the in the rear housing, so don't worry about taking that off. Okay, so now I've got this out. I'm just going to lift this up, lift this cover up. It's always easiest to start at a corner. Well, not always, but usually easiest. So let's just start moving this thing around. There we go. Come on. There you go. You can hear the clips. There we go. That's all happy. I note that this is the very first time it's been opened. So that's as hard as it is. Now, let's just take a look at the inside. So as I mentioned, let's start with the easy stuff. The DVD is on a very long ribbon cable, which snakes all the way back to the motherboard. Okay, this is your hard drive, which I, of course, am gonna rip out and toss in the garbage. Well, of course, I won't do that. I'll use it as a spare, but I'll replace it with an SSD. Um, that's your CPU fan. All of your ports. Memory is under here. So there's a number of points uh, I should make. Number one is that you don't have to take off this uh, uh, mounting bracket if you don't want to. It, this mounting bracket is attached just to this uh, heat cowling and uh, if you pull off the heat cowling, well, this just comes with it. It's not bolted down into the system. The second thing that's important is that the a uh, hard drive uh, is really just held in by that screw there. You don't have to um, um, pull any of this off if you just want to change the hard drive. So that's easy enough to do. Just pop that screw at the back, slide this out, lift it up, pop off the SATA connector, and you're on your way. And the last thing I want to point out is uh, at the start, I was showing you that you don't uh, unscrew the uh, little screws here. You just turn them a quarter turn, half turn, and you'll hear it pop. And that's because that's what it is. And that's because that's what it is right there. Okay? okay next okay, next we pull out the three, four, five, six screws. Which are those? Little guys. To pull off the mounting bracket. Just simple spring loaded mounting bracket. Then there's a screw here. There's a screw here. There's another one here. And I already pulled one out of here, and that'll pull this whole bracket off. Okay, I've got those screws out, so I can lift this up now, 
but I found that HP has used this unit here, which is tape on it. So I've also now pulled out this screw here, now, as well as this screw right in the corner here, and now I'm going to try to pry this up. And I think this is all going to come off as one piece. Yeah, there it is. And you can see here that there are two hooks, so it needs to carefully be unhooked from there. There you go. That's the heat shield going. So, what's that get us into? Well, that gets us into the memory. In my case, that's an 8 and a 4. It's weird they didn't do 8 and 8, but that's their choice, I guess. It's done now. This is a PCIe chunk of memory that runs as a hard drive, but it's very special memory. It's incredibly fast, faster than standard NVRAM uh, that's used in um, uh, most SSDs. Let's just pull this off and it'll tell us a little bit about Yeah, there we go. Pull that heat sink off and it tells it that, that this is Intel Optane memory. And what that does is basically it works in conjunction with the hard drive to uh, make it run radically faster. The operating system will see it as one disk, even though it is two disks, and uh, well, one physical disk and one SSD. And um, it will move all of the data that is used frequently, which primarily means the operating system and other things, to the Optane memory. Uh, it will optimize it. If you're not familiar with Optane, you can take a look. We have a fair amount of information on it on our site. Other than that, it's uh, pretty routine stuff in here. Basically, this is a laptop that they've jammed into a, well, you know, they've connected to a large uh, screen and uh, put it in a nice package. But it's using laptop components. Uh, let's just go around and I'll give you a close-up of the entire board so you can see what's there. So that's your left speaker. I'm just going to go around really slowly so you can see the whole thing. And there's also a screw there, which I pulled out. And then you can see here that the mount is hooked in, so we just slide it out of it. There we go. And it just pops out nicely. Easy peasy stuff. So I've got that out. Now I'm just going to pop the SATA connector off. So there it is. I've got the SATA connector off. Then the housing came right off. And there's the very crappy hard drive. So you can see it's a single platter, so it's very light. They don't really care, though. It's a, not a laptop. But I'm going to sub in a an SSD. So HP has thought this through a little more, and they've developed this chassis for more than one type of hard drive, which is nice. So take a look at this. If I take my take my SSD and I put it in the chassis, you will see that they put screw holes on the top, which is quite nice. Let me just get that straight. And my screw holes will line up in just a second here. There they are. So I'm going to now screw this down and then reconnect it all. Okay, so I've screwed that in with three screws. Now something to note is that the screws that it shipped with are uh, very uh, heavy thread and you need a fine thread for this. So I did have to change it for other screws. Um, now, practically speaking, it's an SSD. It doesn't even need to be screwed down at all. If you're really in a panic, you could just leave it in there loose. Now, it's not like it's going to go anywhere. Um, and there's no moving parts, so in a cage, there's really nothing to, to worry about. That being said, it's bad form, and you really shouldn't, but uh, you could if you were in a hurry. So, okay, so let's just connect this back up now. So I'm going to slide this back in. There we go. Slide it in. I'll put that screw in. Oh, well, let's put the... Let's put the uh, SATA connector back on. There we go. And I'll put that screw in there. Right there. And um, we'll start reassembling. Okay, so now I've got the drive in and I'm going to reassemble this. I need to make sure that I hook this underneath those little guys there first. And also that the heat uh, gel, it's not really a gel, but the heat pad is correctly on here. So Make sure that that's on. When I say correctly, it just has to be on there. So that is now hooked in down there. See? This will go in, and I will screw in one, two, three, uh, four, uh, let's see here, five, six, seven screws. And then 
actually at the same time, to save time, I'm just going to do this right now. I'm going to pop this guy on. There we go. And I'm going to pop in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. You start at the top and you fold it down towards the bottom. And you just go around and you push it. Now I've already clacked this down. I heard it go crack, crack, crack a bunch of times. There we go. And it's good. Now put the uh, stand back on and I'm going to fire it up. Okay, so we're just powering it up now. And something you should know is the power is down in the bottom corner here. I have to push it here. That's the on switch. The keyboard is shockingly heavy, likely because they put a metal plate in it to uh, keep it uh, firm. Okay, and uh, the mouse, uh, you simply lift up on the back and it pops off and the batteries pop in like that. So when you hook it on the front and pop it back down, there you go. You don't have to, that's just the on off switch for the, uh, for the mouse. You don't have to uh, play with that to do anything, to get it to work. Okay, this is mildly important. There's a section here after you've entered your Microsoft account and your password that asks if you want to create a PIN. People are often confused by this, and they really shouldn't be. A PIN is, uh, well, you know what a PIN is, but uh, the reason why it's better than a password, in addition to it just being easier, is that it only works on this machine. So I can't go to another machine and cite that you've got a profile on it and sign in using this PIN which means specifically that if uh, you get a virus on your computer or some malware on your computer and somebody uh, figures out what your pin is because they're you know key logging your strokes or whatever and they figure out that that's your pin they can't remote in from another uh, location they can't sign into your mail they can't do really anything the pin is completely useless unless you have physical access to the computer so i would highly recommend you set up a pin Okay, so now the machine's set up and uh, it's asking if it wants to install bloatware, if it's allowed to install bloatware. I say no to all of this stuff and I highly recommend you do as well. Uh, you don't need McAfee, you don't need Dropbox, you don't need any of that stuff. Uh, all of this stuff just runs automatically in the background and clogs up your machine. So, um, in particular McAfee, I'm not a fan of. The uh, corporate version's okay, but the retail version, in my opinion, is terrible. Uh, it's really boggy. It slows machines down. Also, Windows 10 comes with uh, an excellent antivirus called Windows Defender. It's updated all the time. I've run with it exclusively for years, and uh, I test uh, with other antiviruses uh, my machine periodically. And I, uh, because of what I do with security, I attend a lot of risky sites. And uh, Defender has done an excellent job of keeping me safe. So uh, I don't recommend you uh, install any of this extra bloatware.